not harass anyone mentioned in this video. Everything I'm saying is alleged and is based on the available facts at the time of recording. Everything I use in this video falls under fair use. Uh, hi, hi, hello, I'm here, I'm alive. Apologies in advance if I sound like shit this video. That's for two reasons. One, I'm in a closet because I realized last video that my room, my new room is a little too echoey and I sounded like garbage, but I couldn't change it. So uh, we're in a closet now and that means I'm holding my mic like to me and like my fucking laptop is balancing on my knees. It's, it's a really professional setup and also I'm tired as fuck. Um, the reason I couldn't do this last week was because I moved and then I started working and also college and also other things. There's just been a lot of things competing for my time and unfortunately one of those things had to give and that did just end up being um, YouTube and streaming but I already kind of made an announcement like that in the last video and also this is the beginning of the video. I'll go in more depth at the end because I know that people probably don't really care. <laughs> people want to know, you know, what the fuck is going on with Pink Sauce. <laughs> So yeah, you know, like every other person on the internet, uh, I've heard of the pink sauce, and if you haven't, I would really, really like to join you under the rock you live on. How much is rent? We can discuss it in DMs. Just hit me up. But with recent statements made by both, you know, Chef P and, you know, Dave's Gourmet, a lot of people have been talking and a lot of people have been talking about it, like, pretty generally, like, just kind of going over, like, the statements and, like, oh, wow, Chef P lied, even though we don't technically know that yet. I'm pretty positive she's lying, but for reasons I'll get into, I'm gonna talk a little more about that. But people have been talking about it in a really general sense, and I kind of want to get into a little bit of the specifics. I call it the three E's. And those three are entrepreneurship, ego, and entitlement. This is pretty common, but I think that she very much embodies all three. And by common, I mean common in influencers. Not so much in people, mostly because they're missing the first one. But in influencers, you see those three a lot. And in Chef P, you see them a lot, a lot. I'm going to go through the timeline we've been given by Dave Gourmet and kind of explain a little bit how a person can justify in their head. Now, obviously, I'm not in Chef P's head, but a lot of people have just kind of come to the conclusion that, oh, wow, she's so crazy for this, when I think in reality that this is a lot more common of a mindset than people want to believe. I'm going to give a quick recap, but it's not going to take very long. I'm assuming if you clicked on the video, you know what's up. You know what the pink sauce is. It's pink mayonnaise with dragon fruit in there. Um, it got bought by Dave's Gourmet. Dave's Gourmet is a proper, legitimate, very well-established, like, sauce company for a little over a year now. The two have seemed to be working in harmony. Chef P would go on to go yachting and, you know, go throw herself parties and constantly brag about how much it was selling, despite how people would very often post how the sauce was on sale, how it was always, you know, never out. But despite that, uh, Chef P and Dave Gourmet proclaimed that it was doing pretty well, with Chef P being the latter of the two. Essentially, a couple weeks ago, maybe a month at this point, I moved so slow, uh, Chef P posted a GoFundMe and a video alongside it, essentially explaining that she had been completely scammed, that the contract was complete, was extremely predatory and that she had not been paid anything. Well, initially, a lot of people were actually on her side, kind of. I remember seeing that the general consensus was that, you know, we really don't like you, but objectively, this sucks. And it wouldn't be the first time that an influencer has been caught a really shit deal, lest we forget uh, Two-Faced <laughs> and all of their crimes. So it wouldn't be the first time we've seen this, which is why I think a lot of people pretty quickly were, you know, while hesitant, a lot of people were willing to believe her, you know, it's not a totally unheard of thing. Especially since it seemed like she would be the type that would be easy to get to sign a very predatory contract. So a lot of people were giving her the benefit of the doubt here, and honestly, so was I. Fast forward about two weeks, and Dave's Gourmet responded and said very plainly, we have paid Chef P 120k, we don't really know what she's talking about. And from that spawned a pretty 
I wouldn't say intense, but for reasons I'll get into later, a decently intense back and forth between Chef P and Dave Gourmet that was actually really interesting because Dave's Gourmet has released a lot more information than brands usually do, that being a whole timeline. So I'm gonna go over the oh no they didn't live journal for all of my proof, though I find it very important to point out that this statement, the original, has been deleted. It seems Dave's Gourmet has retracted this statement and I have personally not seen the real thing. I cannot speak to the validity of it. However, instead of the statement being faked or anything, I personally believe this was retracted for legal purposes. Either, you know, publishing this very, very blunt timeline might have reached an agreement, or it puts them in a worse position to fight Chef P legally. I personally believe the latter, but the former is very likely. Uh, I'm not a lawyer, however, typically the reason you don't really see brands being as blatant as Dave's Gourmet was in this statement is because it often puts you in a harder position to fight if you have to, and it really does seem like this is heading towards a courtroom, which will be very, very fun to watch. Not fun to be in, but definitely fun to watch. I think we should also note that we don't necessarily know that Dave Scormay is telling the truth. The internet has pretty collectively decided to believe Dave Scormay 100%, but I am here to say corporations will lie to save face. While it is rare that they are as detailed as this, because again, suing is a thing and being so blatant is makes it very easy if they are lying. Considering Chef P's record, I'm going to read this statement in the video as if it is true. Just keep in mind while listening that it may not necessarily be true. Uh, just for the sake of argument in this video, I'm going to act as it is, but I do want to have people, you know, keep an open mind about it because I see a lot of one way and I'm going to be real. I <laughs> I dislike her as much as anyone else does, but I think we do need to remember Dave's Gourmet is a corporation, not a person. Everybody sit down, grab a snack, grab a coffee. I want a coffee. I don't have one. I probably should have made one. Grab a hot chocolate, maybe. Maybe a tea. Maybe a nice matcha. Get yourself a little coffee cake, too. You know, make it a thing. Sit in your bed, put a blanket over, watch it at night. Um, I'm just saying what I want to be doing right now. Oh, God. Okay, let's get into this. Dave's Gourmet revealed that Veronica received 45k up front for the purchasing of the Pink Sauce brand from her. It was agreed that she would be responsible for handling all refunds to customers who received bad products or didn't receive anything despite paying for it prior to the partnership. After the agreement was signed, it turned out Ms. Shaw did not have enough money to cover all refunds, so Dave's Gourmet gave her another $30,000 to cover refunds even though it was not their responsibility. What we can get from this is that clearly she spent the money, like immediately. While I'm not going to say what the money was spent on, it could have been put back into the company in ways that could not be, you know, taken back. However, given her very publicized track record of yachting and things like that, I am willing to bet it was not in on the company. You know, while it is possible that all the money was frozen in the account, or it was said somewhere else that uh, Shopify and I think it was PayPal uh, froze both of her accounts for what seemed to be a couple months. I could be wrong. It really does seem unlikely that 30000 would have been frozen and completely inaccessible. And even then, if it was just a frozen thing, I don't think Dave's Gourmet would have given her the 30k and I think they would have told her to publicize that everyone needs to wait. Even though Dave's Gourmet is a corporation, 30k is not chump change and I think it really was that it's maybe a little bit of it was frozen, but I very much doubt that the whole 30k was frozen. And we can just contribute this to entitlement as, you know, Chef P likely believed that she would, you know, one, not have to refund people because her product is amazing and why wouldn't you like her product? It's awesome. And two, she would, she's just successful enough to make, you know, that 30k to cover it anyways, so why would she have to bother? Could also put it under ego. A lot of these are very intertwined. They are not, like, very distinct categories. You very often have multiple, if not all three. Fall of 2022. Shaw was struggling financially, so Dave Scormet provided Shaw with multiple cash advances that totaled more than $40,000. They did not charge her interest or her fees. These advances were supposed to be offset by the future royalties that Shaw was going to earn. 
February 2023, Veronica requested over 10000 in marketing expenses to throw herself a birthday party to maybe be featured on TikTok. She also requested that they pay for her dress, $800, and her shoes, over $600. Dave's Gourmet would not approve these expenses, suggesting a smaller budget. She got, ex she got upset and never collaborated with them since. I wrote in my notes that this is outside of the law. I am not sure if this is completely outside of the law. If she was just requesting that they just pay her 10k to maybe do this, I don't think it is. If she was requesting us to be like considered actual marketing expenses and like the f like billing of the company, it probably counts as fraud. It just very clearly shows that she does not understand what it means to be a partner. I very much believe that she thought she was on equal footing with Dave's Gourmet and therefore could make these requests like a quote-unquote CEO, even though I think CEOs are a lot more private about it. I think she very much thought she had the leveraging power to say, give me 10k, um, not understanding that that's just not how that works. What I'm more interested in is that this very clearly demonstrates ego. Another example of her very blatant flaunting of money would be all the yacht photos she would constantly post um those though those have been deleted from what i've seen i think she uh someone on our team told her that maybe that's a bad idea if you're trying to say you're broke and the constant bragging about how wealthy she was how well her sauce was selling etc this is very common in flex culture um which it very much seems like she was playing into it's also very common in what i like to call the influ oh god i'm gonna mess this up so bad the influencer entrepreneurship sphere. Say that 10 times fast, I sure as fuck can't. And to demonstrate this, I wanna pose a question to the audience. Ever notice that it seems like all entrepreneurs are flex hype beasts who need to tell you how much they make 25-8? That's because we only really see these entrepreneurs that are like Chef P, that are influencers. Whether it's on TikTok, YouTube, whatever else. I was gonna say Twitter, not Twitter. Oftentimes we see people flexing like this when they're trying when they're also selling a product because it's there in that lifestyle that also sells the product um, in this very strange entrepreneurship influencer sphere flexing becomes very innately tied to it we see that with chef p here where it's very much seems like her marketing after getting in walmart was to just brag about how wealthy she was on tiktok um, except she forgot the part where you're meant to use your influencer to sell the influencer product. Oops. I mean, like, imagine if she posted videos of people yachting with her pink sauce. Like, it's not amazing marketing, but it's better than doing, like, nothing at all. February 2023, Shaw attempted to submit business expense reports for personal expenses, like buying four pairs of sneakers or expensing her grocery bills. Dave's Gourmet informed her that such activities were fraudulent. March 2023, Shaw communicated that she had spent the entirety of her previous advances and that she needed another advance to feed her children and to avoid being evicted. Dave's Gourmet sent her two advances that totaled $5,000. So, okay. I actually wrote some different notes here, but um, I, I just realized something now as I'm reading it. Also, someone's blowing up my phone. Can they fucking stop texting me? <sighs> okay. Um, I just noticed this now. Wasn't one of her main deflections of why she spent the 120 that she was homeless already how is she saying she's gonna get evicted if she was already homeless and that's why she spent the money but now she's saying she's gonna be evicted wasn't in her GoFundMe that she was also being evicted but her reason was that she was in airbnbs when did she buy a house is that where the money went did it go to a house why is she being evicted twice but was also homeless I'm so, oh, I'm, oh, uh-oh, <laughs> something, does, something doesn't add up here, uh-oh, <laughs> let me gonna dig into that, someone else can do that, dear god, I'm not gonna find housing records, who do you take me for, <laughs> okay, so not bad, that's the notes I actually wrote down, um, particularly about f telling Gr Dave's where she needed to feed her shit, like, feed her children, um, we can take this statement one of two ways. Either she is telling the truth about not being able to feed her kids, or she's just lying out of her ass, which considering she's saying she's going to be evicted, but was also, I, I, I think she's lying, but for the sake of argument, we're going to consider both. Assuming she's telling the truth, 
she is a terrible mom. Like, I know people get touchy about that, but, like, assuming she genuinely used all of the money and cannot feed her kids, she used almost 120 grand. I don't know if it's 120 grand at this point. I think it might be closer to, like, 80 or 100. I didn't, I didn't do the math. But she used that on... We know for a fact that she went yachting. We know she's claimed to stay in... Airbnbs that just due to math would have to be exorbitantly expensive. We know that it was for parties. So all of that came before her kids. Allegedly. Was what she wanted Dave's gourmet to believe. Well, I'll say she's lying, which is probably the more uh, accurate um, assumption. She's still a pretty terrible person and is very obviously using her kid as, kids as pawns. To get more money. Because remember she also used them in her GoFundMe. And was like hey I can't b feed my kids. And I can't buy them stuff for school. So it very much seems like she's not above using her children. To make people feel bad. <laughs> May 2023. Due to the large advances on Shaw's royalty payment. The balance of quarter one royalties owed to Shaw came out to six. 66.86. Oh, scary numbers. Oh, jump scare. Dave's roommate decided to hold off on deducting with ten thousand dollars in advances from the royalties until a later period, so that she would have more funds to cover her needs at the time, and instead paid Shaw ten thousand six hundred sixty-six dollars and sixty-eight cents. This balance and all the payments process have been outlined and communicated to her consistently. Dave's roommate then deducted the above mentioned advances of ten thousand dollars at the second quarter royalty payments. June 2023, Shaw submitted an expense report to Dave's Gourmet that included requests for payment for her time dedicated to making social, social media content. Such requests were outside of the terms of the agreement. Dave's Gourmet then asked her for clarifications related to the various expenses listed by Shaw, but backups, receipts, and explanations were not provided. Um, just again, I think this is a mix of ego and entitlement. Uh, ego when thinking that one, uh, she would not need to show receipts, that she would not be caught, that they would simply buy her at her word and entitlement by just requesting this in general. Um, Ms. Shaw had certain obligations in her contract related to social media activities that she violated multiple times, but Dave's roommate chose not to enforce them as to not create a strained relationship. In total, Veronica Shaw has, been, has received over $120,000 in payments from her partnership with Dave's Gourmet in Pink Sauce since August 2022 to date. That's the statement. Um, and since this has come out, there have been a couple videos of her basically saying, no, they're lying. Um, but after that, it's been pretty quiet um, on both fronts. I would assume things are so quiet because they're both preparing on the legal front. Um, I very much do not see this ending in any way other than a courtroom. It seems like Chef P is very determined to squeeze as much money out of this as she possibly can. So I don't really see her taking a settlement. I also don't know how willing Dave's Gourmet is to give her a settlement. Because I would assume part of that settlement would be to sign over the rights to Pink Sauce. And again, I really don't think Veronica is going to do that. Um, so I really see this just ending up in a courtroom, which really sucks because God, the sauce looks mediocre as fuck. And it's just really unfortunate that it's very likely that this is going to damage other influencers' ability to sign with bigger corporations in the future. Because if there's one thing corporations hate, it is to deal with an egotistical, entitled influencer entrepreneur. Alright, thanks. That's the video. Um, that was- that's the main video. I'm gonna move here so my audio might get really fucking weird. God. Yeah, I know I made a video, like, two weeks ago, um, where I promised I would start streaming again soon. Um, but I lied. I'm a liar. Um, I lied to you all. Basically, I don't know when I'm gonna- ah. I don't know when I'm going to start streaming again. I really do want to. It's just, it's so hard to find the time, um, honestly. And, like, I still don't have the proper adapter cable I need. And I just haven't had the time and or money to go buy it. Um, 
So I don't know when I'm getting back to it. I really do intend to, but I just have not had the time at all. Um, college is a lot. Living on my own is a lot. Um, I, I do intend to keep making videos, but they're going to be on this very similar schedule where they're very sporadic whenever I feel like talking about something. Because I'm going to be very honest, there's a lot of topics I just don't feel like covering, even though I know they're trendy. Like, I know it'd be more topical for me to go talk about Yandere Dev and, you know, the fact that he's a pedophile. But, like, he, he, I, that's, the problem is that I can sum up my opinions on it very quickly. Um, how in the fucking world is anyone surprised that the man who made a game where you take photos of women, of teenagers' underwear to sell them, and the main, the first rival, the f coconut, her, her whole thing was that she was being sexually abused for money, and you befriended her, and then you killed her. Even if he even bothered with that. How is anyone surprised that the man who wrote that into his game and made it a core gameplay element has refused to remove it for like six years is a pedophile? How are any of you surprised? <laughs> that, is just, that is just the average thing the whole video. There you go. That's the whole point. There you go. You, you, you saw the video. Good job. Um... <laughs> Oh, okay. I'm done. I'm I'm tired. I'm really tired. Um, if you like the art you see in the background, you should follow me on ArtStation in Twitter and my art YouTube channel where I post speed paints, like real speed paints, not just like kind of short ones, like proper rendered scenes. Um, but yeah, you should follow me on there. Um, don't, don't follow my Instagram. I really don't post there. kind of sucks that, like, my biggest socials, YouTube and Instagram, are the ones I don't post on. Because Instagram is just AI shit now, and fucking YouTube is just not my main source of posting. Oh well. Um, if you made it this far, thank you for listening to my rambles. I'm gonna go hopefully make this make sense in the editing room. Um, I'll see you later. I love you all, like, parasocially, but, like, not me, though. Like, you're parasocial to me. That's what this is. You're being manipulated. Whoa. Okay. Bye.